Morning mates. The Apple Watch has a three axis accelerometer that tracks motion. Yes, it can track large movements like you rolling about in bed, but also subtle movements like those generated by breathing. And Apple developed its sleep staging algorithm based on these respiratory induced breathing patterns. Put simply, different sleep stages have different breathing patterns and thus different motion patterns. But how accurate is it? Let's check it out. Now this chart here is known as the confusion matrix. So oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. And obviously whoever invented the confusion matrix has a wicked sense of humor. But lucky enough for us, it's not that confusing. Let me walk you through it. Now, up the y-axis here, we have the true label, the shining beacon of truth, sleep scientists like myself, marking different stages of sleep, core, that's REM, that's deep, that's wake, truth, 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 truth. And along the x-axis, we have the predicted label from the Apple algorithm, right? And what we're doing here is we're looking for alignment. When I say it's deep sleep, I want Apple to say it's deep sleep also. Let's check it out. So this first one here, right, this top square, I've said, that person is awake right now. Apple has said, yes, they're awake 70% of the time. But there's a small chance they go, no, they're not, Nico. Right now they're dreaming, they are in REM sleep, 3% chance here. There's a 27% chance that they go, they're not in wake, Nick. They're in core sleep right now. And there's a very, very small chance they go, no, 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 they're in deep sleep. All right, so that's how it works. And we can work our way down here. So when it comes to REM sleep, I've said they're dreaming. Apple, 78% of the time agrees with me and says, yes, that's correct. 21% of the time they say, no, it's core sleep. And once again, very small chance of the Apple algorithm marking true REM sleep as deep sleep or wake, 1.2%, 0.28% chance. So very good with the REM there. Core sleep, 83% chance of aligning with yours truly, and other sleep techs, of course, and small chance of deep, small chance of REM, small chance of wake. And then we get to the deep sleep down here. And it drops off a little bit with deep. And that's one thing I notice with myself personally and also on sleephq.com. 62% um, alignment there, but quite a large chance, 38% chance, that the Apple sleep algorithm will mark true deep sleep as core sleep. Very small chance of it marking it as REM. Very small chance of it marking it as wake. I'm pretty impressed considering this is coming from breathing motion, little breathing patterns. That's just insane. And what we can see here also is the most common misclassification is that of true deep sleep. When someone really is in deep sleep, misclassifying that as core sleep here, all right? That's the biggest one. In fact, core sleep is the biggest misclassification overall. You can see it here, 27, 21, and 38. Now, what's interesting is the distribution of these label mismatch errors here is very similar to human errors seen in inter-rater reliability studies. What Apple is saying here is they're basically throwing old mate under the bus and saying, hey, Nico, we know you're very good. However, if we gave you the same sleep study data and also old mate Lanky the same data, and we plotted this out, so we had Uncle Nico up the left, Lanky down the bottom, obviously I'm the true label, Lanky down the bottom here, we would get a very similar confusion matrix from two sleep experts. That's what Apple's saying here. So they're taking the piss and going, you guys aren't very good, which is funny and true. Now recently, I've been testing out this new FDA approved sleep diagnostic device called SomFit, developed by an Aussie company, Aussie, 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 CompuMedics. We Aussies just rule the sleep industry, don't we? We've got CompuMedics over on the diagnostic side, then we've got ResMed over on the treatment side, and then we've got Uncle Nico doing the education, sitting right in the middle. How good is that? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Anyway, I've been comparing the EEG, my brain waves, my sleep patterns from this device with Apple. Let's take a look. 
All right, let's do this. So here's Sleep HQ, this is my platform. We've got some sleep stats, some oxygen stats. It's a sleep apnea management platform. We'll scroll down here though to the Apple Watch Sleep Hypnogram. Here it is here, all right? These are my sleep stages coming from my Apple Watch. And then over here on the right, we have the Compumedix SongFit Hypnogram. One generated by brainwaves. Going through the different sleep stages, your brainwaves change. It's the SongFit and one generated from breathing motion. Let's see how they compare. So the first block of sleep with Apple is core. Over here with SongFit, yes, core. And then we'd have first block of deep sleep here at 9.50. Over here, CompuMedic says 9.45, pretty close. And that runs through to around 10 o'clock. Around 10 o'clock, pretty good. Then we have our next block of core sleep. Yes, another block of core sleep. And then we hit our second block of deep sleep. And this is what I normally say, you get most of your deep sleep in the first quarter of the night. And over here on CompuMedix, 10.44, 10.45, pretty good. It runs through to 11.15, 11.16, pretty good. Then we get another little block of core, another little block of core, and then our first REM period here. And on Apple, 11.27, 11.27, brilliant. And then that runs through, it's only a small block of REM here, to 11.40, 11.47. Now next, hmm, here we go. So we've got another block of core here, and with some fit, hmm, we've got another chunk of core here, but we've also got some wake periods, and also a little chunk of deep sleep. And remember the confusion matrix, the most common misclassification is true deep sleep being generated as core sleep, or wake being generated as core sleep as well. Core sleep was the most common misclassification. Uh, we can see it here, all right? Then we hit our second REM period here around one o'clock. One o'clock runs through till 1.25, runs through till 1.27, pretty good. Then we got a block of core, block of core, little block of deep, little block of deep, some core, some core, and then our third REM period at 2.25, 2.30, pretty good again. Runs through to 2.55, runs through to 2.55. Then we have a little block of core with some wait periods. And yes, we've got the wait periods here. See the little wait periods here? And then we've got this little block of deep, little block of deep here. Another little block of core, little block of core. And then we hit our fourth REM period on fire this night, around four o'clock. 354, pretty good, runs through till around 420, runs through till 420. And then once again, a block of core with a little interruption there, block of core with a little interruption. And then we hit our fifth REM period at five o'clock. Okay, and it got this one wrong. All right, so you can see here it says, my fifth REM period ran from 5.13 till 5.26. It says it's very short here over at Apple and over here with CompuMedix, it says it runs right through to 5.54. All right, so I've got this one a little wrong. And then we get another core sleep here, more core, and then we finish with a REM block. And we finish with a REM block. I mean, that's pretty bloody good. Now let's have a look at the different sleep stage percentages. Now on this particular night, Apple said I was only awake for four minutes during the sleep period. SongFit said 24 minutes during the sleep period. They said I had 23% REM with SongFit, 30% REM. Bit of a difference there. Now core sleep, 65%. And with SongFit, we need to add stage one and stage two together. So 51 plus five. 56% core, 65 versus 56% core, and with slow wave sleep, deep sleep, 11%, and deep sleep, 11%, bang on. Pretty cool. So what's happened here is Apple has misclassified a little bit of my REM and a little bit of my wake as core sleep, and this correlates very nicely with the confusion matrix, which we saw a little earlier in the video. There you go, but overall, it's a damn good fit, especially considering this is a consumer device measuring sleep from my wrist, which is quite remarkable, and it's only gonna get better. Now, just before I go, if you're in the sleep apnea business, 
if you're a pharmacy, if you're a clinic, and you wanna start doing your own home sleep testing using the SOMFIT, I'll put some information in the description down below. Check it out. Until next time, guys, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.